Great. Thank you so much for your perspective. We really appreciate that. Uh, we're going to actually move on to uh, lightning rounds. Uh, the uh, lightning rounds are, are actually, uh, it's a new concept that we've come up with at SSVMS where we have one of our members who comes up here and will present what brings them joy in medicine. And our first speaker, you will all know, uh, Dr. Ruth Haskins. She's an obstetrician from Folsom uh, in a private practice there. She was the past president of the California Medical Association. And she will present a community perspective on restoring joy in medicine. So let's welcome Ruth Haskins. Hi, I want to thank Lindsay first for allowing me to share my passion for uh, restoring the joy of medicine to physicians uh, within this program. It means a lot to me. Uh, I am a solo practice gynecologist, and uh, two years ago when I was president of the CMA, my focus was on restoring the joy to the practice of medicine. And when I lost, uh, when I came out of being CMA president, I volunteered at my little hospital, Mercy Folsom Hospital, to become the chair of the wellness committee because I thought I would continue that kind of a sharing of the joy. But it turns out that wellness committees, every hospital has to have one. It's a JCAH requirement, it's the law. Wellness committees really were created to follow physicians who either have addictions or have disruptions and just to report back to the um, medical executive committee. Well, I thought that was crap. So um, I thought we should really prevent these kind of problems rather than just hang around waiting for somebody to be a disaster and then follow them. And so I volunteered to be chair and I just redid the entire wellness committee. And what I'd like to share with you today is what I did in my little hospital so that if there's any hints that you can take back to your places, then we'll all be a happier community. Uh, so I recognized right away that uh, Lindsay, I'm going to let you turn the slides so that I can just focus on the words, if that's okay with you. And the slides sort of just highlight the things that I'm saying, but not directly. Um, I, I found it necessary, first of all, you've got to have a lounge. You have to have a lounge. There has to be a focal place that doctors at a hospital can meet. And it has to be a place where they can get information about what's going on in their medical community, from the administration to the physicians. When they're in the dark, they're not happy people. It has to be a place they can network and get to know each other because now that we're all in our little own silos, uh, there has to be a place that we can talk to each other and know who the name and the face are. And it has to be totally relaxing, a place to relax that has food, beverage, healthy food, chocolate, more chocolate. I found that chocolate has to be there every single day, every day. Continuous supply of chocolate is essential. But a place that you can go and get food between uh, cases or when you're on on the weekend is really important when your cafeteria is closed. Separate from that, I added programmatic themes. Separate from just keeping a lounge, I had programmatic themes in the lounge. So I started with, the very first thing I did was laughter is the best medicine. It was Red Nose Day when I started the program. So I had a basket of red noses and encouraged people to wear them around the hospital. And everybody, uh, even the hospital president, you can see him in the patio if you're on the right slide, um, everybody wore the red noses. And it gave people not just laughter, but it also gave them a sense of contribution because a buck for the red nose at Walgreens goes to children's health. So it encouraged uh, giving in the community. And when doctors give, doctors feel better. Uh, the next was Crazy Socks Day. And I provided people socks that they could wear uh, unmatched. And it just gave a highlight to suicide prevention. Next was lavender, which uh, lavender sachets still, that was two years ago. I'm still finding the sachets I made for that sitting around the emergency room, around the computers, and around uh, the hospital. People are using that to keep them in their pocket. It's really very powerful. But with each of these themes, there was information about how and why that medicinally is helpful to the doctors. Um, th uh, lots of information about trips and tricks and tips for stress reduction was included in each of these themes. Uh, sleep, I provided eye patches and uh, earplugs, but then a huge demonstration from the book Why We Sleep as to why sleep is important to physicians. Gratitude, people got uh, free uh, thank you notes, and those who used them had a sense of 
feeling good about thanking their mentors. Um, I created a lending library. The first shelf is books uh, that people just like to read, written by people like Atul Gawande or Abraham Vergesi, any of the medical writers. There's books for lending. But my hidden purpose in those books is not just to educate, which is important, but also within every book, there is the doctors and dentists confidential hotline and the suicide prevention hotline, uh, a sticker in every book. Um, there's also a full shelf of books on joy, why you should be happy, uh, ma mindfulness, meditation, yoga, and then another book uh, shelf that's dedicated to coloring books with a whole set of gel pens. So we've tried to address every area th th that we can give people a place to go to relax. Uh, separate from that, um, my hospital, different from most hospitals, isn't just a program for physicians. We recognize that the entire healthcare team needs to be in sync Happy people get healthy patients. And so we've included the nurses, the technicians, the uh, everybody in the hospital is invited to participate in programs that we have. And the three programs are Meditation Monday, Walk with the Doc Wednesday, and Freeform Fridays. So Meditation Monday has evolved from Sahaja Yoga meditation that we started in the lobby with a harpist accompanying us to some uh, guided meditation and sometimes just silence or music in the hospital chapel. But on a given Monday, anybody can come for a period of time or they can come for the whole hour and it's there for them. It's just there for them. And some people have never been there but have come up and thanked me for having it, just knowing it's there for them. The walk in the wild is a 26 minute walk around a lake that is across the street from the hospital. And it's not just getting some sunshine and getting exercise, but it's also an opportunity to meet and talk with other people that are as stressed as you are. So it's been uh, very beneficial. And the frivolous Fridays are the most fun. We've done a whole range, and you'll see as the slides suddenly go through more quickly, the professional masseuses at our hospital have done hand massages. We have had many times the puppies or dogs come over just for uh, puppy love. Finger painting we did, rock painting. We made slime and played with our hands in slime or Play-Doh. Music therapy has been successful. Uh, the Friends of Unwanted Rabbits have brought their rabbits just for stroking the rabbits. And it, it has given us an opportunity to foster empathy. We have in our hospital a We Care program for really hurting physicians after an adverse event and the CANDOR uh, communication and uh, uh, optimal results. We have those programs, but separate from that, the Wellness Committee puts out, uh, enhances those programs. When we had an unexpected loss of a newborn, we had the balloon therapy on our Frivolous Friday where people would write their messages to the family and just release it. It was very cathartic. On that Monday, instead of meditation, we had um, a rosary, reading of the rosary by Sister Cornelius. And these events uh, just uh, add to the programs that the hospital already had. Uh, fellowship and exercise, the walk in the Wednesday is great. We also have all kinds of signs encouraging people to take the stairs instead of the elevator. Uh, what our wellness committee has done is encourage our hospital to connect to the broader community. We've brought in every aspect of the joy of medicine. We have advertised all of the programs, the social programs, the availability of life counselors, the availability of psychiatrists at UC Davis that are specifically dedicated to doctors in need, uh, the uh, local peer groups, thank you uh, for having it at Eldorado Hills. Our, our peer group on Tuesdays has been awesome. Uh, and volunteer opportunities in the lounge. We are constantly recommending that people volunteer, not because they should give more time than they're giving to the practice of medicine, but because volunteering really makes your heart feel better. And we have with us here today, Carla Ornelas, and uh, she represents clinicas that are run by the UC Davis students uh, and managed by the Davis uh, and North Cal North State medical students. If none of you, if any of you have not already volunteered for such a program, I can't tell you how wonderful it can make your heart feel about being a doctor to be involved in a program, even just one Saturday every so often. So please talk to uh, Carla if you get a chance, because volunteering, that's one of the things I promote in the lounge. Our newest project is continuously having peanut butter and bread in the surgical lounge. It doesn't cost me much. It is amazingly well received. If people know that there's always peanut butter and bread in the surgical lounge, it, it goes in four days and people are delighted to always know that there's food. 
in the future, our future plans, we're going to have therapy dogs once a week where people know they can come to the lounge and pet them. We are going to set up a Uber or Lyft program for anybody who feels too tired to get home in a safe manner. Uh, we plan to continue the music therapy. The harpist will come wherever we ask her to come. We will continue the massage therapy. Now she's there for uh, postpartum ladies, but sh when she doesn't have patients, she will do hospital personnel or doctors. We have now, it's in the future, but we have tech therapy. The person who runs our Cerner for our hospital is in the doctor's lounge every Friday at noon because that's one of the biggest burnout uh, uh, causes of burnout. And lastly, uh, what we have on the back burner is a plan that I will be presenting to the Medicare Committee at my hospital for evaluating the senior physicians for recredentialing or redirection. And that's the end of my program. My, my name and number are at the last slide. Hopefully these slides will be available to you. And I encourage you, please reach out to me um, for questions or comments or additions or any way I can help you to bring any kind of program like this to your hospital. I'd be happy to. Thank you for your attention.